everybody. <laughs> Can you believe it's only February 22nd? And there is, we're in like full swing now. It's crazy. We may have more real winter weather. I'm drinking iced tea. It's that warm. It's like going to be 67, 65. It's going to rain. The wind is blowing. You may hear my Corinthian bells chiming on the porch, but I just thought you could join me for some seeding. I was going to bring you up to date on what's been seeded, what I started with, where I'm at right now, and I am just going to kind of show you <laughs> what, what I was thinking. You know, I hadn't even known that I would be planting this amazing flower this year, but I was given these seeds by my longtime fan, Jamie, and it's the Formosa Lily from the Jefferson Monticello Gardens. Uh, obviously, that's an heirloom. <laughs> it says Thomas Jefferson Center for Historic Plants. So this is a, an historic plant, and I can't even pronounce the Latin name. But anyway, I, you know, when I first looked at it, I thought, oh, it'd be nice to have a couple of bushes or a couple of, I don't know exactly how it grows because I'm not a big lily grower. I bought daylilies last year and the deer just mowed them down. So, it's funny. <laughs> I've got one cat in the house. You may see her. She's been going in the laundry room. That's where I'm seating. Yep. Did you see her jump down? I missed it, but I think you saw it. Anyway, this morning I thought, okay, do I let the cats... I'm just letting Spot and BJ go out now because they have showed a faithfulness to stay around the house. Tiger, who got run over in November, uh, she would go off, cross the road, and go hunting or whatever it was. They're all fixed, so it's not like they're prowling. But, <laughs> but anyway, we lost Tiger in November, and so after that, and of course, we know, if you've been with me for a while, you know that Patch, she, she doesn't really get along that well with her siblings. Uh, I have a, if you're new to my channel, please subscribe. I am sharing my life on the homestead. As a late bloomer homesteader, for sure, I was a late bloomer gardener in, in LA, and now I am a late bloomer homesteader going into my fourth year here on the homestead. But I took a litter of four kittens thinking that I, one boy and three girls, thinking that I would find homes because I, I said, I am never getting another animal after Linden, L-I-N-D-E-N, -E named after the town in Tennessee where my father was born. Anyway, um, I said, I'm, I'm never having another pet. You know, I just want to be free to, to go and visit my sons or travel or whatever. Of course, <laughs> the whole world changed in the last four years, so... Any notions that you might have had about your future have been changed, I am sure, by now. Um, at any rate, I fell in love, you know, by the time you get them fixed, they're four months old, and then you've got to nurse them through that for a couple of weeks, three weeks, and so, and Spot had some other health issues. He had a big hernia that he had to recover from, and so by the time all that was settled, they're six months old. They're not cute kittens anymore. They all wound up here. Anyway, year before last, Patch took off and lived down at my neighbor's for a week. And, and I just, I hadn't given up. I didn't feel like she was gone on to the kitty heaven. So I just started going down the street and until I found her at a neighbor's. Because she's had that tendency, I keep her in now. I have kept her in for months, maybe the whole year. I, I lose track, but the other two go out and I see Spot is on the porch. He doesn't go far. He's kind of lazy and big. And <laughs> so anyway, today we're going to be planting seeds of the Formosa Lily. 
and just you know talking about some stuff that's going on. The way I'm doing this, this this seed is like sort of like a seed, um, a big flat seed that kind of would flow in the wind. Extremely fragrant. Oh, we love that. We love that. At any rate, they're kind of big but flat, and you you put them a quarter of an inch down. In the seed packet, I didn't even feel anything. And I thought, there can't be 140 seeds in there, but they're very flat. So what I'm doing is I decided to put two seeds in each of these 50. And if, if indeed there are 140, it's hard to believe, but maybe there are, I will go around and put another third seed in, and then hopefully it won't be too difficult to separate them. And, you know, I have these visions. I've had these visions since I've had more space to sell a lot of plants and I was just I called my my neighbor who's been doing it for a while. He's lived here for a long time and he's got a a wonderful I'm I'm pushing this down after each seed because it, you can't see them and I don't want to repeat and I've done that so many times. I lose track if I'm listening to a podcast. I just I go, where was I? I literally look over here and I look back and I go, where was I? So if I push it down after each one, then I know it's done, you know. Uh, anyway, I called up my friend Ricky down at the end of the street. And he's got a, a perfect greenhouse that he added onto the side of his shop. And it's uh, ideal for starting seeds and so he has a little business I think he used to well he used to he used to grow tobacco um, of course you know tobacco is very big in the south historically still is he told me he made ten thousand dollars last year <laughs> and I thought good grief you know if I could get something like that going but you know he's got the perfect setup he has a greenhouse he can just go in that's heated because it's attached to his shop and he's got a fan and and it's just it's not that big you know it's maybe I don't know eight feet by ten feet something like that and he's got a row on each side and then he can just do trays a lot of trays when it's done he's got this big huge wagon uh, that's sitting in the middle of his shop flatbed wagon and or trailer or whatever it's an old wooden one so anyway he can lay all of those seedlings out and he can pot them up if he has to before he sells them and all of that and it's just an ideal situation are you like me and you have to do this in your dining room yeah so you can get away with this sort of behavior when you live alone <laughs> but not if you've got family and kids and everything you just you just have to pick it up and put it away and and all of that or do it outside somewhere this is where I do it everything's a mess and I call I call him up this morning to see if he's got some cabbage starts and because year before last I bought cabbage from him it was my first year down in the big garden and so I didn't I didn't have it all together to to get things started you know the cool season stuff started so I bought he was having a hard time selling the uh, cabbage and so he just gave me a tray which turned out to be about 30 plants <laughs> and you know if I hadn't had such a bug problem I would have had 30 cabbages so anyway I called him up this morning when well, I texted him and then he called me back and, and he said you know he just you know he's smart see I did it again I gotta remember where I am he I may not have enough to get in the season because I'm doubling up but he said uh, he didn't grow any extra this year but he would be happy to give me five or six so I said sure no problem it's no not a big deal either way and I, I said, well, I just feel like I'm late already. 
you know, he said, yeah, you should have started those sooner. You know, I should have started the cabbage in January. Now, uh, folks around here say that, including my friend Daryl, says that he has better luck with the brassicas in the fall. But cabbages just take so long. They take absolutely months to get big. And, you know, that's if they're going, things are going well. As you can see, I have all this mess here. <laughs> I, I, I am just not that organized. I've never found a way to really be that organized, take notes and make, you know, like people send me seeds later on. I don't know, unless I just happen to remember, I don't know who sent me what. Uh, I will remember this because we had a big conversation about it. And I was just thinking, oh, it would be nice to have five or six of these beautiful lilies. But then I thought, if I, get, if I get my fence around my perennial orchard area over here, I could have 50 of them. It could just be f fabulous. And I'm just, my mind is just going wild this morning thinking, oh my God. You could plant all of those seeds and wind up with a um, hundred plants and then I could sell them. You know, maybe Facebook Marketplace or something or down at the farmer's market. To get a table at the farmer's market is um, not bad at all. It's uh, I think it's $25 a year, and you get that from the uh, extension office. I know, you know, the Santa Monica Farmer's Market would be a whole different ball game, uh, but the Farmer's Market down here is is pretty modest, got to say. So yeah, that's what's been going through my mind. I just would love to get, to, to grow a whole bunch of plants, and I, I think if I had to say, what is your favorite part of gardening, it would be planting the seeds. Because whenever you're planting the seeds, you're so hopeful, you know. It's, it's an expression of faith and hope to plant a seed, in my opinion. And, you know, sometimes a seed like this one, it's not edible but it, it brings you great joy unless the deer eat it <laughs> then it brings you great sorrow so oh man that's the thing so it's interesting about seeds you know for the very beginner they say something like you know you have to have the seed under the surface at least the um, length of the seed. Well, some seeds are just, they're smaller than a grain of sand. <laughs> so you think, well, how on earth am I going to get that under the soil and not have it too far under the soil? And so I've talked about, I talked about this last year when I was planting my onion seeds as, okay, that's one. <laughs> this is two. I use just a strainer, uh, it's a, you know, the wire kind of strainer. I think it's down here. Obviously it works better if you haven't made all of your soil wet, your starting mix wet. And it doesn't work so well if, if you buy the starting mix with perlite already in it, because the perlite is bigger than, but that's fine. Basically, all you want to do is to just have the soil and then you just shake it. I'm not doing it with this because it's very, first of all, it says quarter of an inch with these seeds. And I'm going to show you a seed. I think you can see that. See how thin it is? It's, you can see that it's, a, it's more than a quarter of an inch long. I'm assuming that's why it says to the seed depth is a quarter of an inch. So when you've got some, a seed like this, the, the tweezers, even though the seeds are hard to pick up, it's still going to work better for you, in my opinion, if you uh, use the tweezer. 
because your your fingers, you know how people say I have my fingers are too fat for texting. I have fat fingers, people will say. And uh, and the same is is true for this. If you if you use a tweezer, you can slip the length. I'm planting it also because this is a trick that I, I knew from just from squash seeds, you know, big cu cucurbit seeds. Winter squash seeds are huge and and beans. And if you point it point the tip is up. And same same for garlic. You want to point with the tip the tip is up, you know. If you point with the tip is up, I'm hoping that the, for these seeds it's the same principle is that it sprouts from the top. You can slide it right down in that and soil is so much easier with the tweezer. So I hope that's helpful. When I get done with this, I'm going to spritz it. I keep... It's a pain, I gotta say, it's a pain to use glass bottles for your cleaning fluid and for your spritzing water. But, you know, if there is something to, in that plastic that's leaching into the liquid, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather use glass. So I will spritz this whole thing because, um, and I'll point this, um, this tip out that I've talked about before is I have a big, it's actually my canning, my deep water canning uh, enamel pot. I mean, if you had something different or better uh, that's metal, that would be, be fine, stainless steel, whatever. Uh, what you don't want is a plastic bucket because what I do is I put my potting soil in there and then I boil a, I fill up my tea kettle and I with filtered water and um, I boil it and then I pour it all over and I stir it with a wood wooden spoon until it's um, mixed together, until it all feels kind of damp and, and you've got all the clumps out and everything. Then, then I put the lid on it. And I, I w you don't want to use it right away. You could burn yourself. And so what that does is it kills off all those gnats. I'm telling you, I think I have seen two gnats. And I am I'm already in full swing. I have been in full swing with seeding since for over a month. Uh, I started in January. I started Lufa and Roselle in January because both of those plants take a long time. In, you know, in my zone, three years now, I have grown uh, Roselle, which I first grew in California after being introduced to it. This is Roselle hibiscus, and the calyxes, which is the flower, which is the, the case of the flower where, it's, where the seed, it's the seed pod. The calyx is the seed pod. It holds the seed, and the petals fall off of that, and it swells up as the seed is forming, because it's, you know, it's a pretty big seed when it's wet. <laughs> Later when it's dry, it's not that big. But anyway, the, uh, the calyx, you, you use a kind of a plunger type thing, and, and you get that seed out of that calyx. I don't have one of those. I kind of always use a chopstick or something. It's not so easy. I'll do a video on this when I get, if I get some. But for three years now, I got close a couple of times to getting seed and it's just the whole, but before I get seed, before I get the calyx and I get some seed, the, uh, the freeze hits and the plants get killed. And one year it was just the deer got in my flower garden, so at least one year. Last year my son came and he put an electric fence around my flower garden. so. It was a double fence, so it didn't have to be that high, because deer, if you're new to this whole thing, <laughs> if you're new to the deer battle, um, there's, there's different things you can do. I know that permaculture, uh, permapastures uh, channel sells bone sauce, and that's supposed to be really good. A lot of people suggest that to me. I haven't, I haven't, I tried to order it last year and they were out, and then I never got back around to it. But I did order some comfrey root. If you're interested in growing comfrey, they sell the roots. I, I just, 
didn't manage to keep the deer out of the flower garden for two years and then last year we got the yeah as I was saying we got the electric fence and if you put two rows of electric wire uh, about that far apart you know they don't they can jump high seven feet they can stand right beside a fence and jump seven feet straight up and over but only if they can see what's on the other side and if you disguise what's on the other side or if you have a, uh, a fence that you can't see through they won't they won't jump it even if it's five or six feet tall I'm told <laughs> then last year I only grew Roselle in my electric fenced big garden lower garden they, they were slow to get going and they were just starting to make uh, blooms when the freeze hit I covered them with plastic unfortunately uh, I didn't have enough frost blanket and the uh, if you cover with plastic and then the Sun comes out the next day or the next day or the next day it'll just kill the plant so they were all killed <laughs> so I have had I've made all the mistakes so this year I am definitely going to be successful with Roselle and I'll show you I'll, I'll take you around and I'll show you the Roselle this is the largest size cup I have uh, that fits in trays and so I'm hoping to get to where it's that they will be happy in these cups and trays until time to plant out this is Lufa this is Roselle hibiscus if you're new to my channel and you've never seen my Lufa video I encourage you to go and look at that it's my most popular video believe it or not shock to me but the reason is, I figured this out a long time ago by reading the comments, is young and old and all through Asia, all through Central America and South America, they grow, they grow loofah. Anywhere where it's hot, they grow loofah. So because of that, I put closed captioning uh, under the, you know, on the screen for people who don't uh, understand English. So I got a real wide, uh, wide viewing and I'm grateful. Okay, here are my onions that are about ready to go outside. And here's a tip to strengthen your onions is just to run your hand over it. If you've got a little fan, that's fine too. But I think this helps even more because you really do kind of give it some exercise. These are red Malabar spinach growing very slowly. Uh, a few more onions here. I think that's a weed. This is cypress vine, which looks very much like cardinal climber. And I'm growing that to go on my big trellis. This is the sweet annie. And what I did was I just took one of these blueberry containers. And let's take a look at the roots. Got a lot of little roots in there. And I just sprinkled them on top. The, it, the whole thing was just dusted. And look how many came up. There's, I, I just, it's hard to even know. There's at least a hundred plants in there. Oh my goodness. Just touching it, my hand smells wonderful. Uh, I'd love to sell those, but I don't know if anybody would want them. And here, I just turned this around so you can't read it, but it's basil and borage and black cumin and some other herbs this was cilantro I planted a long time ago this is a self-watering you know there's water in the bottom and I thought I don't even have to think about this it's just gonna grow like crazy but the seeds are old and nothing happened so in here on top of my washer and dryer are the lufa roselle walking onions I planted turmeric from my friend Stephen at Nature's Always Right gave that to me yesterday and this day before yesterday and this is heirloom garlic chives this is walking onion walking onions are perennial onion and when they put up the top of the shoot it drops a little floret and they just look like tiny little things like this like that and even smaller. Here's, here's a perfect example. They can be as small as like that. And you, you don't sink it down all the way. You, sh you, you show a little bit of the brown and just push it in here 
that's what I did with all of them and then these shot up these were a little bit larger and they shot up right away so I potted them up this is some red sale lettuce it should be red when it's mature and this is the roselle and these are the loofah there's 10 loofah and 17 roselle very excited i could go ahead and put my onions out ricky this morning he said he's already planted his onions so i'm going oh but i don't have my ground ready and this year what's different from the last couple of years is i'm getting my um my neighbor has offered to use his small tractor with a rototiller and save save me possibly me or me hiring someone to till everything and it'll go very much faster with the tractor the tractor's not going to fit in at every little spot though so you know that's a consideration also so anyway i hope this was interesting i hope you've, you've had some some good tips and I encourage you to get started if you haven't already especially if you're a beginner don't wait you know I have a bunch of seeding videos and you know California small space gardening different uh, uh, mediums uh, to, to plant into such as diatomaceous earth there were a couple of years I just used the sterile diatomaceous earth granules not the powder but the granules and then once they germinate, you know, once you get the first set of true leaves, then you can start putting fish emulsion in your water. And I did great doing that with peppers and tomatoes and, and other things back in California. So you don't have to have just the perfect starting medium. And a lot of, a lot of things will say, use a sterile starting medium you can kind of sterilize it by using this tip I just gave you, you know, uh, because you put boiling water in it and it's going to kill off a lot of the, uh, any issues it might have. I hope that's helpful. I hope you subscribe. Scroll down and click all so you won't miss anything right here on the homestead. Things are gearing up and I wanted win winter to last two more months because I didn't get all the organizing done that I wanted to get done. But such as it is, we've got, we, we have to we have to move when the weather moves right that's what gardening is all about capturing the the right time to to garden in the and get out there so thank you so much i hope you consider growing your own food this year if you haven't already you can learn a lot from a lot of channels including mine god bless you and i'll see you in the next video